Good morning, friends. I am popping in on Facebook Live today. Um, I had not planned to at all, but for some reason, my 365 Days of Praise that I send out every morning, that schedule, and has been coming to you for years, to many thousands of you, for some reason, it hasn't been going out, and I don't know why. So this morning, I thought, well, we'll just we'll do it in person. And um, th this morning, as I, as I looked at it, I thought, oh, well, this is kind of a strange one to do for a first Facebook Live, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and just trust that maybe it will somehow minister to your heart and spirit or it's something that you can share with someone else. I read from the New American Standard Bible, and I know that most of you probably read from the NIV, so if you do, just bear with me. And actually, that's that's what this 365 Days of Praise actually is. When I started 365 Days of Praise, it's because I wanted to have us just have the opportunity to focus on a different character trait of God every morning. And to me, the reason that that's so important is because the more we know who God is and Jesus is and the Holy Spirit, the more we know them, then I believe the less fear we'll have in our lives because we'll know that we can look to them and that that they are there and not just the respect of being Savior, but also being our light or also being our bread or sustenance or also being the quickening spirit if we're feeling dull. So every morning I send out a different character trait of God. This morning happens to be and hang, hang on here with me. I know it's a strange word, but this morning, the Bible describes God as being forbearing. I know it's not a word we use today, but let me just share with you uh, because it's important. If it's in the Bible, it's important, and there's something that we can learn. There's something we can glean from it. And, and the way I had titled this, 365 Days of Praise, or Going Beyond, uh, Beyond Ourselves, is um, do we have a wrong view of God? Do we have a wrong view of God? Let's just think about it for a second. Do we have a wrong view of God? Some people do. Uh, a friend of mine, I uh, call him a friend, he was really a business acquaintance, but his perspective of God, his view of God was very negative. He, he thought God was an intolerable God who would, quote, send people to help. That is the opposite. That's so as far from the truth as, as we can get. God does not send people to help. People make a choice whether or not to receive the forgiveness that God offers through Christ Jesus. So anyway, our, our devotional this morning is, do we have a wrong view of God? And, and let's just go to what the Bible says about God. It says our faith is based on the tolerance of God. Yes, God is not intolerant. God is tolerant. This is crazy for us to really process and think this. But Romans 3, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you just real quickly here, a little bit in Romans 3. It says in Romans 3, 23 um, through um, 25, it says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I think that's kind of a no-brainer. I don't think we really need to debate. I've never met a person who truly thought they were perfect. I know I fall so short all the time of God's holy glory. I mean, he's glorious. We can't even get our minds around how glorious he is. I mean, we just look at creation and we think, oh, this is a glorious day. This is a beautiful day. The Bible says that the, the heavens display the glory of God. So we just get a tiny, teeny, teeny bit by looking up at the heavens and being in nature. But let me go on. Most of us can admit that we fall short of God's glory. It goes on and it says in verse 24, being justified, that means just as if I had never sinned. And that's an amazing thought. Just as if I had never sinned, being justified is a gift. This is a gift from God by his grace. Grace is a gift from God. It means he he in mercy looks over our sins. This is just huge, it's a gift. We all need to hear this good word. It says, being justified just as if I never sinned as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. That sounds big and huge, but it basically means that Jesus was the price, his death on the cross was the price that it took 
for God to buy us back off the earth's slave market. We're slaves to sin. We're slaves to the enemy. We do what we don't want to do. We say what we don't want to say. We have impure thoughts, all that kind of stuff. And, and God bought us back. That's kind of what it means. And it says in verse 25, whom God displayed publicly, and it's talking about Jesus dying for our sins. And then it says, this was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God. There's that word. Hang in here with me. I know it's, we may have to be kind of saying, hey, I just woke up. You know, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about how the Bible says that God is forbearing. He bears with us. He is not an intolerant God. Keep listening, please. It says, this was to demonstrate God's righteousness because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed would you love to have God just pass over all the sins that you have ever committed I would I do I choose to say yes thank you God thank you Jesus for just laying your body down there on the cross and your blood covering all my sins. That is a very tolerant God. That is a very loving God. So today's Beyond Ourselves devotional that you can usually find on my website at debbietaylorwilliams.com will give you every day a different description, a different character trait of God. These are dark days with COVID-19. We can't help but have a healthy fear that our loved ones are, are we, but we're probably more worried about our loved ones, might get this virus that is going around rampant. We need to have a healthy fear. But friends, I'll be real honest with you. What I fear more than dying of COVID-19, I fear for all those who have died and are dying and do not know about Jesus and our Heavenly Father's love and their willingness to just pass over our sins. That is heavy on my heart. If you know anyone who does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is the time to reach out to them and not to say, hey, how are you doing? But to reach out to them and say, hey, I'm going to touch base. This is Aunt Myrtle or <clears throat> Uncle George or whoever. And just reach out to them and say, hey, just, I just want to touch base. How are you doing? And then if you don't know where they are spiritually, just be bold. Pray before you make the call and then just be bold and say, well, I'm going to touch base with you also just you know about how you are with your relationship with the Lord with Jesus because I care about you and if they say if they say oh we're good God and I are good say I'm so glad and then you might share a resource with them I don't care who you share with them Tony Evans Beth Moore uh, of course I'd love for you to referring to my website so I could connect with them and possibly have a relationship with them. But that's not the point. If, if they say, oh, I'm good with the Lord, say, oh, that's great. And by the way, did you know I've been listening to this awesome podcast? It's really encouraging in these days. If you're a single mom or you're reaching out to a single mom, you might refer them to Pam Canales, a Rice Ministry. She's got great resources and encouraging resources for single moms. There are so many resources for us today but if the if your friend or your relative says you know I, I don't believe that stuff I don't have a relationship with God then just be real kind and say I understand I get it you know life is so busy and so crazy and a lot of times we're dealing with the here and now and the thing right in front of us but if you'd ever be interested I'd love to share with you a little bit about where I'm coming from and my faith or I'd love for you to check out this resource um, if you ever are interested because the really cool thing that, oh, I didn't know a phone call was gonna come in this morning, but the, the really cool thing that you could say is, and I don't even know where I was now, but uh, is, where was I? Somebody tell me where I was. Uh, if somebody 
doesn't have a relationship with God. I'm sorry, I really can't remember what I was talking about before the phone rang. Well, anyway, this has been long enough. I didn't mean to keep you this long, but the bottom line is uh, this is a time for us to realize that we as Christians have an opportunity to share the Lord with our friends and family who may not know them. Pray for the person before you make the call. Pray for yourself. Don't be afraid. Call them and just express genuine interest. And then just say, hey, there's this resource I know. And you may even feel the prompting in the Holy Spirit to pray for the person or to offer to pray for the person on the phone. And if you feel that as a believer, if you feel that nudge in your heart or it comes to your mind, offer to pray, then you do it because that is the Holy Spirit. That is the Lord wanting to use you as his child to reach out to another child of God or to reach out somebody who is not yet a child of God. So please do it. And you might also just say, as you close or hang up, depending on how the conversation's gone, you might also just say, well, I just wanted to touch base with you. I know, I hope you know I really care about you. And before I go, is there any way I could be praying for you besides for your protection against COVID-19? And most of the time somebody will say, well, yeah, you could pray and they'll tell you and just say, I, I will do that. I will be so honored to pray for you. And if you don't mind, I'd like to touch base again sometime soon. And then just tell them you love them and goodbye. And then make sure that you are faithful and right then go ahead and pray for them pray for however that person is asking you to pray for them and then make sure you continue to pray for them because it could just be them seeing the answer to prayer in their life is what helps turn them to think well maybe there is a God who hears okay guys thanks for joining me thanks for your patience with me when I forgot what I was saying when my phone rang uh, I love you but more important than that is we have a great big heavenly father and lord jesus christ who love us go to them and bless you today bye i don't know how to turn this off